Hi guys, thanks for coming back to the next video. Um, I wanted to catch up a little bit on some stuff that I feel like the Lord has um, been laying upon my heart and then also some information um, in regards to stuff that I've had noted down in my journal that I've not had an opportunity to bring bring to you all um, as of yet. I think the last little bit of information um, that I shared with you um, was in regards to dress rehearsal and it was um, in regards to the song um, that I was writing down and um, and it was an old song. It was an old song. Um, now, the information that I received about the song and the dream was received the night of 9-3 into 9-4, uh, the night of September the 3rd into September the 4th. Now, I did have a dream the very next night um, that I would like to share with you, but um, in regards to that, um, I need to um, preface it with some things that had happened um, in my life. Now, the Lord has given me some information in regards to um, showing me some things. Um, I'm trying to see where that is because um, it was on August the 30th. On August the 30th, um, I had a lot of discussions with the Lord that day. I mean, it was a quiet day. Um, I, I made a lot of notes. Um, I, my eyes were open to a lot of things that the enemy happened to be doing. Um, and so maybe I need to start from the 30th and work my way to, um, to the dream. Probably so. Let's do that. Okay, so um, I've mentioned to you guys before um, about that song that the Lord gave me a while back, uh, Love is in the Air, that one that's back from the 70s. Um, I had heard that again in the middle of the night. Um, now, what is so weird is, you know you can hear a song and it just seems to, to stick with you, right? Well, I hadn't heard that song um, I can't tell you how long. It's been a very long time, and the song was back from the 70s. And so um, and so I know it's not just something that I heard, and it, it's just running through my head. It, it's not. It's not a song that I have heard in a very long time. And as a matter of fact, I wasn't even aware of what all the lyrics were until I, um, until I looked it up. But on um, the night of 8-28 into the 29th of August, okay, in that night, a second time I heard that song. It's like the Lord is, is I'm hearing it in the spirit. I'm hearing it at night. Um, and when I wake up, that's when I realize I've, I've been listening to it. And, um, and so I'm not sure um, what he's trying to say about that per se, but let, we'll go, let's go back and take a look at those lyrics again. Um, I think I provided a link for the song and the lyrics. I'm not sure what I did in a video uh, prior, but go back and take a look and see if you can um, take a look at those. Maybe um, the Lord will show you something in there. Um, that same night, I had a dream of a very tall building. Um, it was a very tall building, and I was speaking to someone. Um, I don't know who it was. I cannot recall their face. I, I don't know what it was, but I was being told that I needed to go into um, this tall building. And so I said to the person who was talking to me, um, you know, I don't know where I'm supposed to be in that building. And, um, and they told me um, I was told to go to the top. And, um, and so I had looked up at the top of this building, and I saw that the top had glass all around it. Um, it. It was just like a glass wall, a glass. Uh, I, I'm not even sure, but I think the roof may have been glass too. Uh, but that's where I was being told I, I needed to go to the top of this building. And that was the end of that dream. Now, a couple of days before that day, um, I had heard in the night, and I heard it twice, 
in the night. Um, so I know it, it was the Lord trying to make sure that I heard it. And what he said was this. He said, the little boys are from me. I'm going to say that again. He said it twice in the night. And he said, the little boys are from me. Now, when I heard it the second time and I woke up in the night and I said, the little boys are from you. My mind went immediately to Isaiah 66. Okay. And the male child. And so I wasn't sure what that was. Um, I have prayed and asked the Lord in regards to it, and um, I will share what he has told me. But it was, the little boys are from me, okay? And so um, on the 29th, um, the, the same night I had that dream about that tall building, I had woke up in the middle of the night, and I had just asked the Lord. I'm, I'm just like, Father, you know, let, let's talk about those little boys that are from you, Um you know, I said, what, what does this mean? The little boys are from you. And what can you tell me about this? And he said that they are family connections. He said they are family connections and uh, plural. Okay. And so I was thinking then, okay, well, is it the two male Childs, the two man childs, I think some of the scripture says in Isaiah 66 and Revelation 12, but I think others actually say that it's male, male child. And so, um, and so I'm, I'm not clear what this means. You know, I, he says the two, he, no, he didn't say the two. He said the little boys are from me. And so, um, and so I'm leaning more toward like Isaiah 66, Revelation 12. Is that what you're talking about? Those children, those boys, those male children that are being born. Is that what you're talking about? Um, you know, is it, is it the two witnesses being born? What is this? What, what can it be then? Um, you know, is this, is this that in my current life? Is this something that's going to happen to me personally? You know, um, are, are two are little boys being given to me to to handle to take care of what you know what is it that you're trying to tell me Lord because he said family connections and um, and so when I'm pondering upon family connections I'm thinking bloodline right and I'm thinking his bloodline and so I'm still I'm still teetering and, and pondering upon all that right and I'm like well what in the world uh, what does this mean, Lord? You know, what, what can this mean? Um, and so um, I didn't have any more information from him at that point. And so um, the little boys are from me. Uh, I just want to bring that to you and, um, and talk to you in regards to that. Now, um, on the 30th of August, and so this is something else that I want to bring up to you too. On the 30th of August, um, I stayed close with the Lord all day long. I, I was talking to him all day long. I was able to notate quite a bit of our conversations all day long. Um, my, my eyes were open to what the enemy was trying to do um, in my life. I saw it. I was able to stop it. I was able to thwart it. Um, and I made some notes of just a few things that I had noticed that the enemy was doing um, in, in my life. And I was trying to catch it, but I was also noticing that how much more this has been ramped up um, in regards to um, in regards to uh, deceitfulness happening. Um, you know, uh, the the enemy comes in to steal, to kill, to destroy, and so um, and so I'm I'm watching some of this stuff that's happening just as I'm going through the day, and I noticed that the temptations of the enemy was was so strong and prevalent that I, I made note of it in my journal. And so I just want to bring up a couple of things to you that I noticed and had to stop and fix um, because it was just coming out of nowhere. And if I had not um, took a stand and, and corrected it right then, I would have been guilty. And so, um, and so let me explain some things that I had noticed. I had gone to a store and... Um, and I had four of something. I had bought four containers 
small you know containers for my utensil drawers because um, I have my in-laws merging in and so we're trying to you know sort out some things that we have and, and get a little bit more organized in regards to um, space and you know things in the kitchen and what have you and so I had bought some things so that we can keep some um, you know take up all the room in the drawer and you know get get organized a little bit so I had bought four of those or I had them in my cart and um, and the woman she just she grabbed all four and she rang one and she threw it in the bag and I had I, I just happened to catch it and I looked at that and I said ma'am I said there's um I said there's four of those and she said oh and she said, well, thank you for showing me. Thank you for being so honest. And she went through and she rang the other ones up and put them in the bag. But I thought to myself, you know, um, as much money, you know, here's where your mind goes. As much money as that store has gotten off of me, you know, what, what would it matter that someone would throw three extra ones that were $4 a piece into my bag? Well, here's what would matter is the fact that, you know, for $12, okay, for $12, I would have had theft in my life. For $12, I would have sinned against God. For $12, I would not have peace in my life. For $12. See what the enemy does. See what the enemy does. Um, if I had not noticed that, if I had not caught it, I would have caught it at some point. I always look at my receipt. I would have caught it. Um, but that that's what I'm talking about. Because I had that presented right in front of me. Do you let it go? Do you not let it go? You know? And it's like you, you hear, I'll just let it go. And then you're like, no, absolutely not. I'm not going to let it go. Ma'am, that's three. You know, you need to make sure that that's rung up the same way. But that's what the enemy is doing. Be aware, guys. Be aware. He's in everything. He's like sludge that just gets into everything. And you just have to watch it and be careful and be aware. Um, I've noticed that my animals, I have two kitty cats here. And um, and I've noticed that the... Um, that the um, the character and the personality of my two kitty cats have, you know, um, have gotten, a, one of them has gotten very aggressive and I'm trying to figure out what is going on and then the other one is jumping on the other one and it's just been, in some of my videos you guys are hearing, I've had to stop and say those are my cats running around. I, you know, I don't know what they're doing, but they've been chasing each other and they've been, and it's not just like play. You know, one of them usually ends up getting hurt and it, you know, and so the enemy is like, he's antagonizing either my animals or, um, or, or what, I don't know what the deal is, but you know, I'm going to have to go through and I'm going to anoint my animals because, you know, I don't, the enemy doesn't have a foothold in my house. Um, not here, not anyway, not in my property, not in my family, not anywhere. You know, I'm not going to give him a foothold. And so, um. And so, um, you know, I've noticed that and it's like anger and frustration. It's like, you know, trying to keep my kitty cats off the counter in the kitchen, you know, get off the counter, get off the counter. They know they're not supposed to be on the counter, but it's a constant. It's like every time you turn around, they're on the counter. I'm like, get off the counter. And I, I snap at them like this and they know me snapping at them means get off of that counter, you know, and <laughs> I can go right up and snap right in their face and they're just not even I'm having to get them off the counter. I mean, it's, you put them down there. You put them down, they're up. You put them down, they jump back up. You put them down, you know, you get the newspaper, you swat, you know, and then then that doesn't matter. You get the little water spray and, you know, and I have one kitty cat who just lays his ears back and just he just gets right into it. You know, so I'm like, well, what do you do? It's just, I'm just telling you, I've noticed the difference. I've noticed the difference. And then, and get this. I used to smoke cigarettes many years ago. I've put it down. Um, I've talked to you all about that, about um, about how the Lord helped me get off of those things, you know. And now in my dreams, out of nowhere, out of nowhere in my dreams, I, 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 have, I have cigarettes around me. Like I'm grabbing to, to put one up to, to light one in my mouth. And I'm like, what am I doing, you know, in my dreams? I'm like, you know, this is just... This is just crazy. It's just crazy. So guys, 
I, I'm saying that to you, I'm, 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 I'm showing you just in one particular day, the things that I was dealing with, that I saw how the enemy was infiltrating, and, um, and it just makes me even more sure to say, you know, guys, pray the prayers, make sure that your armor is on, you know, go through and, and talk to the Lord about a covering over you, over your family, over your, your animals, your household, anybody that's coming in and out, you know, that, that any negative or evil entity that may be tagging along with someone coming into your home is not allowed, can't cross over your threshold, you know, pray those prayers in front of your doorways and, you know, your kitchen doors and all of these different things that are in your house, you know, you declare that they are not allowed in there. Um, I wonder sometimes if, you know, it just, it doesn't walk in that way too. Maybe tagging in off of us if we went to the grocery store or something. So guys, um, just be aware of these things. I have been very aware, and I'm sure you guys have seen it too. It's an, it's an increase. It's an uptick uh, in things. Um, so the, the three that I noted down from the enemy, theft, right? Anger, frustration, and um, issues with my, my kitty cats, um, and then flesh and addiction. So, all, I mean, those are all spirits of the enemy. They are not spirits of God, right? And so, um, I just want to say, you know, guys, take a look and see what's going on, because, um, you know, it, it's very prevalent. It's very prevalent. Um, take the actions that you need to take to protect your home and to protect your family. Uh, in regards to this. Okay, so 8.30, I'm still pondering. I'm still talking to the Lord. Father, the little boys are from me. I'm still like trying to ponder this. You know, is it the two male childs, Isaiah 66 and Revelation 12? You know, is it the, um, is it the two witnesses? A lot of people are thinking that that's Elijah and Moses. You know, some say Enoch and somebody else, you know. Um, it is, is the two little boys, or no, he didn't say two. He said the little boys. I'm the one that keeps thinking two for some reason. But the little boys, is that what it is? Um, you know, it's family connections. What does that mean? What does that mean? Um, I had someone send me um, a video, and thank you, Lane. I did share it on Facebook, um, that um, Sadu, do you guys remember, do you know who I'm talking about, um, Sadu? Um, he's the, the prophet from India, and he's usually, um, he usually links up with uh, Neville Johnson in Lancaster um, Prophecy every year, um, Sadhu. Um, he had a, um, he put out a video um, that the spirit of Elijah was released, and so that was pretty interesting um, about that. I, I found that to be um probably the first confirmation in regards to the spirit of Elijah, but I have had many since then. And, um, and so um, I know that the Lord had been telling us a long time ago, he has been saying, you remember Elisha uh, was falling the day after tomorrow. You guys remember that? Elisha was falling the day after tomorrow. And that was back, I don't know, last year sometime. Um, Elisha, and we and remember it came out Elisha. That was the word that I heard was Elisha was falling, and I was like, well, what is that? Is that a plane? Is that you know what does that mean? Remember, I I couldn't fig I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't identify it. And then my friend Lou sent me the little voice clip of um, someone from Israel speaking the word Elisha, um, and it sounded just like Elisha. And so I said, well, maybe it was Elisha's falling. Maybe that's what it was. And, and I think that, that we've had that confirmation. And so now the spirit of Elisha is here. And now a lot of people are talking about that. And I'm so glad that they are. But what is really, really interesting is, is that um, I've had a dream in my dreams at night. Um, I have had the dream of um, um, Elijah and Elisha. So not Elijah and Moses and not, you know, Enoch and Elijah or anything like that. Um, I don't even remember the dream. The dream has been taken from me. 
but I know that the two people that were in my dream was Elijah and Elisha. Elijah and Elisha. Okay. And so um, I'm still asking the Lord, Lord, these, these little boys, who are they? You know, you told me family connections. And then I, you know, I'm still pondering upon that. And then I recall, well, the Lord did say, John will tend to me. You know, is he, does he have something to do with that? Is there something, um, is there something to do with that? And so I went into um, Isaiah 66 and I looked up in Strong's the, the word for man child. Okay, and it actually does show that it could be a male child. And so I said, okay, well, that's that's pretty interesting. Um, and I was doing some um, research in regards to the Strong's, which I think was 2145, Hebrews 2145. And um, I came across a commentary by Spurgeon in regards to um, in regards to the male child. And linked to that particular uh, scripture of Isaiah 66, um, 7 or 17. I'm not sure which it is. And, and that verse may be wrong. But it is the one that was in regards to, to the male child. And um, I will provide that link from Spurgeon. Because it goes into speaking about um, the high priest which links us back to the bells. Remember the bells and the pomegranate on the hem of the garment um, to alert when we are in the most holy place and to alert when we have left the most holy place. And that the bells are what was um, uh, going to keep us safe because it, it made God know that we were in the presence, uh, we were in the holy place. And so there was several things that needed to be done in order for us to be able to enter into that. One of them was cleansing, remember? One of them was the cleansing. We had to be cleansed. And in that one particular article, when I was reading about that, it said that they, you know, they had to be cleansed in the bronze laven, uh, labor that was, you know, outside the Holy of Holies in the, in the, um, in the uh, uh, temple. And so, um, and so, but it, but it's more than that. It's the fact that we have to be cleansed uh, inside our hearts. And so we talked about that, and we've been talking about that. That's something that the Lord has been trying to get us to do. But when I pulled up this Hebrews 21.45, Strong's word that was linking to the male child, um, because of what the Lord was trying to show me about uh, the little boys are from him, I, I, I'm still trying to figure out what the link of that is. And, um, and Spurgeon's commentary brings me back to the high priest. And so, um, and so there's something linked to all of that, okay? There's something linked to all of that. And so I just, I just need to bring that um, to your attention. And so um, I have several um, messages that I just kind of wrote down in my journal. And it's not really a message. It's just really a conversation between me and the Lord. And um, on August the 30th, um, the same day that I wrote down all those temptations and everything that had happened that I noticed that the enemy had been doing, um, he said to me, my child, listen, because I was just praying to him. I was like, Lord, what is going on? And, you know, what, what can we do to protect ourselves? You know, I, I was just reaching out to him and trying to, um, you know, wrap my mind about what we need, what's going on right now and what we need to do to to help um, ourselves and our and our and our fellow uh, brothers and sisters, and he said, "My child, listen. You are not the only one going through, okay, um, right now." And so, in parentheses, I put issues, memories, temptations. Um, he says, "You're not the only one," and I knew that. I knew that already. He said, "Many others are as well in handling situations as they arise." Well, I mean that. 
what else can we do other than pray uh, for our armor and our protection and pray that the Lord still go before us to clear out, clear the path, right? Um, he said they're handling situations as they arise. My ways upon the earth are coming, my love, and none other. No other way will be allowed or seen in the coming days. Multiple things will be occurring all at once, and many will fall by the wayside. So now, guys, he has said that to me before. Many will fall by the wayside. Um, just recently in another message, he was saying, I asked for a prayer for those. Um, to be infilled with oil, to, to, to be restored so that their strength will increase so that they can continue walking with him. Um, he's saying here that multiple things will be occurring all at once. When we, we can see this. We know that the sun has had the, the flare and the, the CMEs that are, that are coming off. We know that that has happened. We know that all of the hurricanes are happening. We know that tornadoes and earthquakes have been happening. Um, you know, we're, we're under the threat of war. That could be happening. I mean, there's, there's all different kinds of things that are happening right now all at one time on a grand scale. That doesn't even include what's happening in everyone's personal life and heart and families and, and relationships and, and work and households and everything else. I mean, it's a lot. There's a lot going on right now. And, um, and he's saying that many will fall by the wayside. And so we really need to just stay in prayer. We stay in prayer a lot for the lost. Um, but we need to stay in prayer just as strong for those that are walking with the Lord right now. Um, so that everyone will stay covered and, um, and stay strengthened in him. Um, he continues on. He said the great shakeup. That's what he said. The great shake up will show the hearts of many the deeds and this is where he said if you so desire I can show you things now things that need mending healing and restoration my ways in you my child are the only things that can be seen or should be seen and I said to the Lord I said father let's do it now I mean, let, you know, let's just do it now. <laughs> I don't want to be dealing with all of this, right? And dealing with all of that at the same time. Um, I, I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to, I just, let's cleanse me first. Get me on, you know, get, get everything cleansed out. And then let me be able to focus and, and help others through at this time. And so I said, Father, you know, to, to empty me, to be ready when you call and infill my being, this is what I want. I, I want to be ready for you. I want to be a vessel for your use. And, um, and I told him, I said, I cannot lie. It scares me a bit. Um, but I trust you. I said, search me, O Lord. Mend, heal, and restore. Uh, bring me to you in all things. And he said, my love it shall be. Now, I had talked to him in prayer not long after that. And, um, and I had, you know, I was just talking to him about it. And he made sure that I said, yes, Father, go ahead and do as you will do. Because, I, and I don't know why he said that, um, but he made sure that I had to agree. And when he was asking me and telling me, he was like, daughter, you know, it's going to be harsh. There's going to be some things that's going to be hard for you, you know, it... it to, to deal with. There's some things that you're going to be seeing, you know, um, are you sure? I, I feel like he, I feel like here's where I'm at on the, on the path. And I feel like I can stay right here. I think it would be okay if I would have said, Lord, I'm not sure that I can handle that right now. I think it would have been okay right here. But for me to get over this, and to continue on, um, I, he was asking for my permission. Um, now, when he did that, I started, I started crying because I was like, Lord, what are you getting ready? <laughs> what are you getting ready to do in my life? 
you know, I, I've already come through a Job moment in my life, or I felt like I have. I, I really felt like I was a dead man walking. I had been broken past the point of even wanting to live at that time. Um, I, I lost, I lost a lot and, um, and I came through it and the Lord has told me that I have walked through fire and survived. And I knew exactly what he meant because of what had happened at that time in my life. And, um, and truly it would not have bothered me in the least if the Lord had just taken me right on home at that time. I was just shattered beyond anything, uh, beyond anything, but the Lord brought me through. Um, and that's actually that whole experience that I'm talking about is one of the things that he wanted me to share when I first started my YouTube channel. And he wanted me to, um, to share how he used nature, um, to heal me in many ways, in many different, uh, different ways. Um, and I shared that in some of those videos in the very beginning. Um, but this is something different. Um, I'm pressing into him. I'm saying, Lord, you know, when I, when I've come to him in the past, like in the past, I said, Lord, what more can I do? You know, what, what else can I do? And what did he tell me? He said, no meat. That's what he told me, remember? And so, um, and so since that time, I've not had any meat at all. And truly, I've not even missed it, really. Every now and then, I might think, oh, yeah, that looks pretty good. But, um, but I've not had any meat. And I've only had fish twice. Um, and so, um, and I try, I try not to do that. But, um, but I, am, I am, you know, doing what, what it is that he has asked me to do. Now, what is really interesting about that is because... Right at the 40-day mark, when I first started it, um, right, it was almost right to the day, 40 days, or, um, you know, yeah, right at 40 days, either 39 or 41 or something, but it was right in there, and um, he asked me, um, you know, did I want to have, did I, you know, did I want to, you know, have you know, a meal of my choice, was there something that I wanted to do, you know, and what, what is it that I wanted to ask for, you know, um, and, and what have you, but that, that, that wasn't the reason why I had stopped eating meat, it wasn't to go on a fast, um, to seek him for something, I was trying to press more into him, and basically was saying, Lord, what more can I do, and that's when he said no meat, and so, um, when the 40 days came and went and he asked me, um, you know, child, what is it that I can do for you? What is it, you know, because I wasn't asking for anything. I really wasn't fasting for any specific thing other than to be near him. Um, it, it, that's when he basically made it known to me that, you know, at that four, we were at that 40 days and, um, and so, you know, I prayed for, I prayed for my family. I prayed, um, his hand upon my family to get them home, um, to, to, to heal their hearts, to, um, you know, and, and, and certain things along that nature. But I have continued to stay off the meat just simply because, um, I really have no desire to get back on it. And so, um, and so, um, and so when the Lord asked me about, you know, this, he, he was making sure that I was telling him, yes, okay, Lord. Okay, so I don't know what's getting ready to happen. I know that it's refinement. I know that it's refinement. And I know that it's refinement that he's asking permission for. So um, that's why I'm saying it's like I got to a certain point on my path. And it wasn't that there was a wall there that I couldn't get around. But if, it's, if I wanted to go up to here, um, I needed to ask and I needed to give him permission to work through me. And so when he said to me, the great shakeup will show the hearts of many the deeds. And um, he said, if you so desire, I can show you these things now. Um, I'm like, Lord, show me now because, you know, I, I'm not sure that I can handle what's going on within me plus what's going on, 
you know, all at the same time. Let's let's deal with me. Let's get this done and, you know, and, and move forward. But I know um, it's dealing with refining, some type of sifting, um, something, uh, something, okay? And so um, maybe you all have had that conversation with the Lord. Maybe you sense something like that in your spirit. Um, maybe in prayer you have asked him, um, I'm, I'm not sure, but I, I know that um, I know that I have agreed to this, and um, and I'm not real sure what it's going to entail. Um, I, I'm not sure, um, but I I know that um, when I was in prayer with him, he spoke of I spoke of going deeper, and he was speaking to me about going deeper, and he said parts would be harsh. That's what he said. And, um, and so, um, I, I don't know what that means per se, but, um, but something's, something's going to be up with it. And so, um, so later on that evening, I was, you know, I was still asked, I'm still searching to the Lord about these little boys. Who are these and, and what's going on? And, you know, and I, I just basically asked him, I said, are you going to be sending them to me during this harsh time? You know, is this, um, you know, if, if it's if it's physical and you are sending me little boys um, to to take care of and handle, you know, is it is it going to happen during this harsh time or when is this going to happen? And, um, you know, am I going to be going through something that I'm not going to be able to handle everything or, you know, Lord, what what does this mean? And so um, and so he says, my dove, it will be miraculous. And I'm saying, well. Well, what will be miraculous, Lord? You know, are are you saying um, that the boys being here, um, or the healing, you know, within me, or ch you know, the chain? What what is going to be uh, miraculous? I'm not real sure. I was following him because I had so many thoughts going through my mind at that time. And he said, "My love upon your life will be seen unto many, my dove." And further across the world will know that my hand is upon your life. My love, listen, there are many that are in need of this love, this fortification of sorts, this power among men, this healing power. You shall see it for yourself firsthand, my child. I shall make amends in your life. And I shall go before you and clear the path of all obstacles. I shall make a way where there is no way and bring forth the desires of your heart. My love, listen, you shall be the one who will be coming forth at this time. Watch and see for what I say is true. You shall come forth in my glory. My way upon the world shall be known unto you. You shall walk forth in great glory, boldly professing my name and love unto the world. My child, you shall be glorious, full of my glory, shining bright for all to see. My hand is upon you, my dove. Now listen to what he says here. Watch not for any physical thing, for I shall be moving amongst the spirit. Let me say that again. Watch not for any physical thing, for I shall be moving amongst the spirit. Now, um, I, I don't know exactly what that means because he's saying um my glory, you will be full of glory, shining bright for all to see. So that appears to be a physical thing. But he's saying here, watch not for any physical thing, for I shall be moving amongst the spirit. So um, is he speaking of preparing us for this at this time? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Um If, if you have a sense of what that means, please let me know. I'm not real sure exactly what he's saying here. Because it says, you, you will be full of glory, shining bright for all to see. My hand is upon you. 
Watch not for any physical thing, for I shall be moving amongst the spirit. So are we not going to be seeing him in the physical? Um, or is it physical changes to our body that we're not going to be able to see? Is it just spirit being emitted out? Is that what he's saying? Um, I'm not sure. So I just want to submit that uh, to your discernment. It says here, um, I shall be moving amongst the spirit. My, my love, your heart knows my heart. I know this to be true. I shall bring forth all things unto you. You will know my hand in yours very soon. Shalom, my dove. And that was the end of the message. And so, um, um, I'm not real sure. Um, I'm not real sure exactly what that means. Um, maybe he'll uh, give us a little bit more information in regards to that. But um, we just learned not too long ago that, you know, it, it may be an on and off thing. We may have, you know, have glory being emitted in in certain places and, and when we're doing our work, but not in, in others. And so... Um, I'm not real sure exactly um, what he's trying to say here, but he's trying to clarify something, and, uh, and I'm missing it. I'm not really grasping what it is that he's trying to say. So if anybody out there knows anything that may bring some clarity uh, in regards to this, please let me know. Um, that particular day, I was able to nap, which is very unusual. I must have been off of work. <laughs> and um, But I had a dream again, and when I awoke, I knew it was regarding Elijah and Elisha. That's twice. This has been happening quite a bit at night, too, is the note that I have in my journal. Unknown what the, dis the discussions were about, I don't remember any part of the dream except what I'm noting here. And that's basically that they were having discussions um, with Elijah and Elisha. Um, so I just want to, I just want to share that again. It keeps coming up. Those two, those two. Okay. Um, on the thirty, on the thirty-first of August, I had a dream, um, and at the end of the dream, this is what I saw. I, I, oh, no, mm -mm, I didn't see it. I sensed it in the spirit. I sensed a red balloon, like those that you see. Have you guys seen the black and white pictures where the only color you can see is a red balloon? You guys know what I'm talking about? Well, that's what I saw, like I sensed it in the spirit. I could, it wasn't a dream, it really wasn't a vision. I could just sense that there was a red balloon and it was like black and white around it. And, um, and so maybe it was a vision. Uh, maybe it was. I would have had to have seen the red. Um, but I knew that the balloon was rising or getting ready to rise. Okay? So it's a red balloon, like, like in those black and white photos where there's no color except for the balloon. And uh, so it was a red balloon that I saw that was rising or getting ready to rise. And so when I woke up, I thought, well, is that representing us, the balloon, getting ready to rise? Is that what that is? Um, but, I, but upon waking, I'm not sure. When I tried to do a little bit of research in regards to a red balloon, I know someone had a prophecy in regards to a red balloon, but I cannot find it. Um, and I don't recall what they said about it. Uh, when I did some... Um, research on what I could find in regards to the red balloon. Do you guys remember that song, The 99 Red Balloons? Um, it's actually a war protest song. Um, and it's a song in regards to um, someone being here that is not from here. Um, someone being here that is not from here. Now that could be um, an invasion from another country, war type of thing, or it could be an invasion of, um, you know, um, fallen angels. They're, they're not from here. And so um, I thought it was interesting when I went through and I looked at the lyrics of that song uh, in regards to Red Balloon. And, um, and so it's 
The English version lyrics speak of war and things that are here from somewhere else. Okay, and so um, and so I'll put the link in. Um, I'll put the link in um, in the uh, either in the description box or in the in a pinned comment so that you guys can um, can find all of that. Now um, I do have some other things um, in regards to um, in regards to September, um, but I'll go through some of the ones in September here shortly. Um, I, this one's getting a little bit long, and I want to go ahead and um, get this video uploaded. But guys, there's a lot going on, and the Lord is trying to um, is trying to give us um, little bits and pieces as we're going along. So um, I think it's very very interesting in regards to um, the little boys um, are from me. He said, the little boys are from me. They are family connections. And you know what that reminded me of? Is remember when I was, um, I was seeking him on the foundational 12 or the fundamental 12. You guys remember that? And um, he was leading to Australia. And this is, this is how we figured out he was trying to point us to Enoch's calendar and all of that. Um, you know, he said something about the fundamental 12. I'm like, Lord, what are the fundamental 12 and what, you know, what is that all about? Um, finally, finally, when I pressed him, he told me, he said, they're stars. And that's how we understood that he was speaking of the Maseroth. He was speaking of the calendar. He was, he was pointing us to all of that. He was pointing us to the stars. And so, um, and so what I, what I felt like when I was seeking him in regards to the fundamental 12 is the same way that I feel when I'm seeking him in regards to um, the little boys are from me. The little boys are from me. And so when I asked him about it, impressed, he said they're family connections. And so, um, and so <laughs> it will come as to what that is. Um, but as of right now, I'm, I'm still kind of stumped. I'm not real sure exactly what he's trying to tell me, but I, I'm going to continue seeking in prayer. Um, I know somehow it's got it's linked to something in regards to um, the bells, the male child, uh, the high priest, uh, the cleansing. He's, he's talking about cleansing, uh, going to a different level. He had to ask for my permission to go into this next part. You know, guys, there's there's something he's trying he's trying to paint us a picture so that we can put this puzzle together and try and figure it out. But um, but guys, I I just I just want you to know that um, the enemy does not want us moving forward. Whatever it is, whatever this next step is, this refining step, this this that the Lord is asking specifically for permission to do, um. Whatever that is, um, the enemy does not want us going there because he's throwing every possible roadblock, issue, anything that he can accuse us of uh, in front of us, okay? And so be aware, keep your eyes open, see, what, see what's going on, and notice that, um, that these things are happening right now. And, um, and I don't know what the issue is about Elijah and Elisha. It, are those the, the little boys he's talking about? Is Elijah and Elisha, what is the male, the male child's? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. That is not what my thought process was at first, but I find it very interesting that he keeps um, bringing this to me at night. And I know that we're having um, discussions at night. So guys, I just wanted to go ahead and bring this to you. I do have some other information in regards to September and some of the dreams and different things um, that the Lord has been sharing with me. I've already shared uh, in regards to the, uh, the dress rehearsal and the song. And, um, and so, but there, there are some other things that the Lord has been sharing as well that I would like to get out there um, here very quickly. One of them is dealing with the convergence and what the what the Lord um, has um, has tried to um, explain to me in regards to that as well. Um, I'm still digging into some information in, in regards to that. I think it ties into um, 
some scripture that I may have found that could help open our eyes in some understanding, but um, I'm not 100% certain on that, so I, hes I hesitate to bring that to you until I feel like um, there's a little bit more that I can um, can share with you in regards to that, but um, I'll be in prayer about that and see what, what the Lord wants me uh, to do in regards to that. So guys, I love you. Uh, God bless you. We have a lot going on right now. Stay safe under his wing. Remember Psalm 91 um, is there for you. It's truth and that's our shield and our buckler. Okay. So guys, um, God bless you. I'll be talking to you all very, very soon. Stay safe. Talk to you soon.